Great to have you back today uh, talking about adult dogs. Hopefully you enjoyed the puppy one we did last week. And uh, what we're talking about uh, this time is the, um, the issues over the COVID lockdown uh, situation. And of course, uh, most people being at home and uh, the dogs having you 24 seven, which of course they all love on one level. And, uh, and then uh, uh, what we're gonna, what we see as the repercussions of that um, complete change in behaviour, both your behaviour and uh, society behaviour with the isolation and uh, social isolation behaviour that we're doing separating ourselves. There's two issues I want to talk about today that I consider are the two main issues that I want you to be thinking about and, uh, and uh, learning what to do about. We do have uh, dogs in there if you need uh, a book to back you up um, in terms of how we do things and what you need to do. So that's uh, always uh, available and uh, we've got an online program that you can uh, track back into and see 30 or 40 videos of, uh, that I've done on, on behaviour uh, generally which will help you, particularly with separation distress which is the first one I want to talk about. So one of the problems I'm worried about is we're home 24 7, the dogs, uh, we've got uh, uh, Reggie and Monty here today uh, helping us out and uh, they're uh, of course we're here 24 7 with them, they get very used to that and then you decide to go back to work or, or um, can't go back to work in a month and guess what happens? They start suffering separation distress, vocalising, digging, house soiling, all of those types of uh, responses are the types of symptoms we see in separation distress. So it's basically it's a phobia of being separated and, uh, and it can get, uh, it can develop in a situation like this very easily. So and we're already seeing it in some of the dogs that we're uh, I've been uh, observing and uh, consulting on. So one of the things I really want you to um, make sure you do do, and this needs to continue daily over the next while, is make sure you are giving your dogs separation uh, at intervals. And uh, uh, I, I use a number of particular techniques, just popping them outside simply for an hour or two at a time and getting, you know, reminding them um, that they can look after themselves out there or whichever situation you leave them in when you uh, used to go to work or um, in the situation uh, where you leave them. Uh, or try and set them back up in that situation for a couple of hours at a time each day. And even a, cup, a couple of intervals are good. You can see I've got my guys down on a clip station here. So um, they don't actually need the clips, but I've just popped them on so you can uh, see that's how they're trained to stay on their mats. Um, and uh, so what we're wanting to be able to do is clip them down. Normally I give them a little chew bone um, while, they're, while they're on their clip station and uh, they get to uh, um, enjoy their, their uh, clip station work by chewing a bone, and, um, some of these raw height bones or whatever uh, suits you to, for them to have. But that's really good for them to, to be able to, um, to get used to being on the, um, on the clip station. So that's good. And, so uh, what is the clip station, Mark? Can you explain so, yeah, how you so create it? So clip station, it? you can see there is, um, if you have a look at uh, Monty, he's got a little um, a little line here. This is the one I've been training the pups on, in fact. And uh, and uh, you can just see his, it's clipped to him and uh, to a piece of heavy furniture or into a clip. Um, you can do a circlip into the baseboard and the wall if you, uh, uh, if you want to uh, have a longer term kind of operation. <coughs> and uh, just having a mat down um, in that position. And I, I use clip station work a lot in my early training and I continue to use it in their work um, throughout. And it's worth really bringing this back um, to um, into play at this time because this is gonna give another opportunity to get them clipped down and staying in one place while you go and do other things. And uh, so it's called a graduated departure. You slowly stretch out the time, um, the length of time that they're able to stay separated from you without getting anxious and vocalised and distressed. So that's that's a big part um, um, of uh, reinforcing their early separation work again and just starting to stretch them out. As I said, leaving them out um, in the yard. I've got a garage downstairs, I pop them in the garage for an hour at a time now and again. And so I'm actually making sure that they stay separated. I pop them, I've got crates in the back of the truck they go in the back of the truck and I might just leave them there for half an hour or an hour um, as long as they've got water in there, uh, not in the sun and uh, they just get, again, used to being separated. So it's a big part of um, making sure you continue your separation work. I might drop those bones off there now while we're chatting. So Mark, do you just 
pop them on a clip station or do you have to introduce well, dogs to the clip station? So you do have to introduce dogs to the clip station and uh, so um, if you go uh, into my tools and techniques uh, um, area in the book it shows you exactly how to do that but basically it's a matter of um, uh, clipping them up on a line um, initially having uh, a line that you can adjust the length to so they um, so they actually um, learn to um, learn to stay on the line without uh, getting um, uh, affected or worried about uh, separation, um, worried about um, the restriction that the line will cause. So when you start them on the line, um, allow, uh, put it around something heavy, and then the dog can actually move in and out a little bit, and, uh, and you can regulate the distance. You can do it um, on a piece, on something like this. And uh, just, you've got the other line over here, and the dog lies on the clip station, you click and reward it, and slowly you get more and more restrictive with your restraint until it learns to accept restraint, at which point you can clip them down firmly. You know, so they're, uh, uh, they're actually down on the clip station proper, and you slowly stretch out their ability just to lie and relax and be uh, comfortable on the clip station. So clip stations and crates are very useful tools right through a dog's life. So well worth getting them used to that. I also like to have my dogs in a crate as well for when I'm traveling. <coughs> and uh, backyard, front yard, um, garage, anything like that, make sure they get a chance to, to stay separated. Um, if you've got the opportunity to, uh, if you've uh, extended your bubble a little bit, um, you might have the other fa um, family members in another part of the bubble and you can um, then start to, um, to stretch them out um, uh, by, by sending them to other people's places as well for periods of time uh, while you're separated. So you're just uh, keeping orchestrated and keeping that time um, where you're um, actually extending um, their ability to be by themselves over this period of time. So you just clicked and reward, Reggie. What, what are you doing there? Just clicking and rewarding them for staying relaxed on the clip station. And, um, and this is just part of what you'd be doing in training, these guys already know this behaviour obviously, so um, so they're much better adjusted to it. But um, but you're just click and rewarding and delaying the click and reward until they learn to stay separated longer and longer on that uh, clip station. And uh, you can have two or three of those around the house. So There's always a good idea, particularly in early training with your dogs or when you're going back to doing some rehabilitation training, which is really, uh, useful to do at this time. I still do, I, I like to do my join up and my bond work, you know, so that's, uh, that's a really important part and, um, and uh, to, to reinforcing um, your bond and your work with them. So you just, just basically um, with your join up work, it's just, um, just simple work with um, um, building the bond and building that, uh, that ability to um, to uh, be close to you and bond, but also be separate from you uh, if they. So this is just literally um, rebonding. I do. Um, I also do some umbilical work, where I put my line onto my belt and walk around doing umbilical, and uh, so you sit, sit down and zen down when they roll the hip over like that uh, is also part of the joining up process so I'm building that bond uh, and getting back into my work with the dog as I start to rehabilitate them into this uh, into this uh, ability to stay separated uh, as, as well as uh, the next stage which is what we're going to be doing uh, the other issue is um, working uh, with dogs at the moment because we're socially isolating from other dogs um, then uh, what starts to happen with your dogs is they start to um, uh, think that the person that you're avoiding out there because of your social isolation work um, is potentially a threat and so you can start to get protective dogs. Reggie's got that slight German Shepherd aspect to him as well as the lab aspect when he's playing with a ball but his Shepherd aspect is he's quite pastoral and protective so, um, so he can uh, you can find that uh, uh, I need with him to do plenty of uh, look work and so what I'm doing in that situation someone uh, just knocked downstairs there and I sort of heard him 
give a little uh, warning back. Um, I don't know if that's um, my son down there or who it is, but um, that's uh, typical of him. Watch, look, look, look. Oh, boy. So if there's a person out there um, or there's someone passing, then uh, I just give him a look command. He watches that person or that dog go past. And when he doesn't bark and he shows pro-social behavior, I click and reward him. I'm wanting to maintain his social behavior when he sees people and when he passes people. And, uh, and at a later date, when we get back into interacting with people, I want him to know that um, that, uh, that, that behavior, his, his well-adjusted social behavior continues after um, COVID situation. So this, this situation with protective dogs, with fearful dogs, with dogs that weren't quite as well socialized as you'd want, are going to be more reactive in the COVID lockdown situation or post situation. And uh, some of my um, uh, colleagues um, in dog control are saying that these, um, the uh, aggression stats have gone up a little bit. Um, and that's not to be uh, um, unexpected at this time because the, the, the reasons that I'm just talking about. So what we're after with these dogs um, is they get good contact. See how he's looking up and doing his bond gaze at me? And when he's looking up into my eyes and look um, for direct, um, then he's asking for direction. He's looking to me for direction. And that's what I want him to be doing. And then when he looks over at the thing over there, I click and reward it and uh, he uh, learns that rather than him take his own initiative to guard and be protected because he feels threatened by that stimulus. Um, instead, he responds to my look command, he does pro-social behaviour, and we're starting then to reinforce and make sure that we're keeping that social um, uh, confidence and social stimulation uh, into um, post-COVID situations. So just get back into your general um, uh, uh, join up work, get back and get your look command going. You'll see another video on our Facebook, we're showing you how to do that. Um, and, uh, and basically, um, this is a behavior that's really important at the moment, in my experience. And uh, even with my dogs who are very social, you know, they're still um, quite conscious that there's a lot less noise around, there's less traffic, they're more sensitive to when people are coming around the house or coming into the house, um, because there's been a lot less uh, social contact. Um, um, or virtually none, to be honest. So it's uh, it's important that we do that. Now that we've um, been able to open that bubble up slightly, um, that's good. We're getting more people back into the house, and um, uh, even if it's just the kids and the granddaughter, um, it's still uh, good to have extra people around, and you can extend that if you can extend that bubble, and that's a good thing. And uh, so this this is the the main work that I want you to do, and I want you to identify those dogs that are particularly susceptible to. To this type of behavior and get stuck in and put some work into them. So they're the main two things that I'm particularly worried about, um, that fear-induced aggression um, developing because of the isolation work and the separation distress manifesting um, once we get back to work. So <clears throat> there's a number of other issues that I would consider three, four and five down the, the lot which we'll get into uh, hopefully in another video and uh, we start our, um, our adult dog school Next week, I think is it coming or later this week? This week, yeah. This week, so um, so you can join us up on uh, on Facebook and um, uh, we've got a um, a, a, um, <coughs> a adult school that allows you to go back into all of our videos um, and uh, follow any of the issues that you might be facing at the moment. One of the things that's happened with the COVID situation is it started to bring up um, those kind of festering problems that were kind of there but because you're at work you didn't really notice so it's really good to uh, identify them um, with, um, and uh, and then we can target the therapy on those behaviors now while you've got some time to sort it out so it's a perfect time to get back and uh, tidy up the issues that uh, your dog may have still have um, and for those dogs that have behavior problems um, it's a great time to get on to at school with us um, and uh, so it's a virtual dog school We've got the virtual puppy school, and so those those two things um, will uh, help everyone um, at different levels to be able to um, deal with what, what could happen during COVID. So um, follow us on um, on Facebook Live and uh, in the school, and uh, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, uh, keeping you informed about what we think, or what I think is the uh, most important things to be doing in the COVID lockdown situation. And as we start to free up. Um, we're, we're able to get back into uh, really um, improving socialisation and other issues um, as we can get back into contact with people over the next month or two. 
So keep up the good work. Um, jump on to on our Facebook, we'll grab dogs in and uh, puppies in if you want to follow us on the virtual puppy school if you've got a pup, then uh, that's where we are at the moment, doing a lot of videos, so uh, come watch us. And uh, yes. So we'll look forward to catching you uh, on the next uh, on the next video. See you later, have a good afternoon. Okay, see you.